Hi, welcome to WellSite Data. Today we'll be discussing the user interface. The first thing we want to do is name a new well. We have a blank database. We're going to name this well for discussion purposes, Test C. We'll click OK and we'll get our connection screen popped up so that we can validate what type of data, the protocol type, how we read our gas, how we send it to other viewers. First thing we're going to turn off some gas types that we're not using in this demonstration. And then we verify that the data types we want we are receiving. All of our pumps, weight on bit, RPM, bit depth, and hole depth along with the rate of penetration. Then we're going to tell it how deep our well is at this point in time. We're going to use 200 feet. You see that initializes first. We close that screen and the data begins to flow, begins to be crunched, and all of our data field is populated. Note there is no sample depth because we have not got bottoms up yet. It'll take about 129 strokes from here or roughly one minute at the current rate with the three pumps we have pumping. First, our sample pictures. Each one is labeled by the depth it was taken. and We can step through them individually in sequence, or we can jump to the end of the file or back to the beginning of the file. They are not in a circular reference, as in most, most picture viewers, because they're not cut that way. Now we're going to set our chromatograph for brevity to a short elution time and a short sample time and tell it to run. And it's going to take about 20 or 30 seconds before the first curve appears. Please pardon the long boring silence. There it is. That's our methane curve. We'll integrate those shortly and show you how we enumerate the different gas curves. The second one coming along we happen to know is the ethane curve. We only have two gases in here. This is just straight stove gas from our stove. We're going to reset one of our stroke counters here just to show you we can set two different markers with our stroke counters so that we can chart different events, measure their time and volume displaced to get to the surface, whether it's a lag bomb or a certain event, an off-bottom event. Speaking of off-bottom event, we've just gone off-bottom. The status bar on the far right has turned yellow and our display at the top tells us how far we are from bottom and the status. Note that it changes to a bright yellow, so from across the room at a second's glance you can tell exactly what's happening. We've reset our stroke counters so that when they read our bottoms up number we will know that the sample that was went past the bit when we went off bottom is now at the surface. Our lag is only about one minute right here. Now you see that since we've been talking the lag has increased from 129 strokes to 130 strokes. We gained one stroke in that period. Now just about any time now we should be seeing the off bottom event show in our sample. Our gas number in red, there it goes, turns to yellow letting us know that we are getting bottoms up from an off bottom event. This reading will not appear on the depth scale of the mud log because this is an off bottom event. Only on bottom events belong on the mud log. Any gas increase or decrease will be noted for pressure analysis. It is being recorded in the database however for later analysis. Now we still have about 35 seconds here before the elution time has run out, so we're going to discuss our diagnostic page. You see that over here on the left is our incoming gas data types, all five of them. You see the one that reads 454 at the bottom is our incoming data. You see it displayed over here. That's being sent out. The blue markers 
On the right is data we're sending out. Note that we truncated all the other types and only sending the one total gas. But every second we get a new packet of data from WITS. Note the blue markers there. That's telling us that the pumps have been shut off and the valves have been shut for our chromatograph, letting us know that we are now at idle. So now we can integrate this sample. We simply click on it and drag across for C1, raise the mouse, click it again for C2, it asks us if any other types. We can click and pass through any kind of data type that we want here, but we know it's, it would be C3 if there was another one, but there isn't. So we tell it to interpolate, and it gives us the percentages of each type of gas. For now.